maximize the go to webinar window from the option shown here if you have uh, any questions uh, during the webinar you can always type in the chat box or the questions window and uh, i'll be answering to those questions during the webinar okay so in today's webinar we will be looking at the introduction to the finite element analysis software basically how to uh, do finite element analysis using uh, the different steps involved in the software and uh, then we we'll look at some simple examples like 2D truss, uh, two dimension statically indeterminate frame, uh, buckling analysis uh, and we'll also look at 3D structures, uh, 3D frames and then uh, we'll go towards lateral torsion buckling of a beam Okay, so for any finite element software, uh, today we'll be focusing on Midas Gen. For any finite element software, we idealize the structure, uh, or we call it modeling. Um, the modeling is done based on dividing the structure into uh, nodes and elements. So if your structure involves frames, then it will be idealized as line elements. Uh, if your structure has slabs or walls, they will be idealized as plate or shell elements in the finite element model and if you have a 3D volume they will be idealized as uh, solid elements which are basically tetrahedral or hexahedral uh, elements. Now uh, the line elements that we will be focusing on in uh, this today's presentation uh, involves beams and truss elements. So as shown on the screen uh, the truss elements have uh, two nodes and uh, they support only the actual forces so you won't be getting any other degrees of freedom uh, forces in any other degrees of freedom so they only uh, present you the actual forces whereas the beam element has six degrees of freedom for each node so you have 12 degrees of freedom for the beam, one beam element and you will get uh, all the six components of forces uh, as output for a beam element which involves uh, actual force, shear, um, moments um, bending moments and uh, torsions. Uh, as you can see on the diagrams here, uh, you have something called ECS, which is the element coordinate system. So, as we go on in this uh, in the demonstration, we'll look at how uh, we can view results um, uh, on a, on a particular element coordinate system. So, we have to keep this in mind. Plate elements. Um, for modeling of slabs and walls, we divide uh, the slab or wall panels into very uh, small uh, finite plate elements, uh, which can be either triangular or quadrilaterals. So as shown in the figures here, uh, you have three nodes in one plane, and connecting them, you have a triangular plate. And similarly, we have a four-noded plate element here. Again, for plate element forces, we go for the we, we, we should keep in mind the element coordinate system. Every plate element has its own uh, local coordinate system. Now the workflow for any finite uh, element uh, analysis that involves basically uh, geometry creation where we can create uh, nodes and elements, uh, the, the outline of our model in, in the modeling interface. Uh, we can also bring in uh, models from AutoCAD, so the students who are more familiar with the AutoCAD type of uh, modeling, you can generate the model in AutoCAD and bring in the software uh, for analysis. Now, uh, then uh, once we define the geometry, uh, we assign uh, the geometry or the lines or elements with materials and section properties. Uh, then we define boundary conditions, uh, which involves our fixed, pinned, or uh, roller supports, uh, and sometimes releases uh, for creating pin pin joints. Uh, then we apply loads on the structure, which can uh, include a multitude of uh, load types, like you have uh, uniformly distributed loads, or uh, temperature loads, uh, moving loads, uh, pre-stress on the beams. So there are different types of loads you can apply. 
and uh, then if your structure involves uh, construction of a, uh, of a um, stage by stage construction then you can also simulate uh, such type of um, stage by stage construction in your analysis and see the uh, finite element results analysis results for each construction stage so but that is again optional because we do it for very special structures only um, then uh, once we have entered the uh, model data, we perform the analysis and uh, extract the results. The results um, mainly include uh, reactions, displacements, forces, stresses, and if you're doing some kind of um, vibration analysis, maybe uh, if you're doing a buckling analysis, then it also involves the different modes of buckling and modes of vibrations. And finally, uh, design. Uh, well, this is not... Uh, supported by uh, all finite element softwares but yes uh, uh, the design uh, is important uh, and uh, we can uh, generate quick uh, steel and concrete member designs in the Midas software uh, which we can go through in the demonstration okay so first example uh, which I'll talk about is the 2D truss analysis so we'll take the simple pin jointed truss as shown in this figure and the elements involved will be truss elements as we discussed a few slides ago truss elements are elements which are basically pinned at both ends and only support the uh, only give you the actual uh, force components uh, boundary conditions for this bridge simply supported so pinned uh, at one location and you have roller at the other location and then uh, we have loads applied as point loads as shown here and for all our, all these examples which I will be covering today, we have um, created the manual uh, calculations as well, so which we will be sending out to you after the webinar, the, um, the link for all those uh, documents. So for this, for typically for this type of trust, we use the method of sections or the method of joints for calculating the forces. So uh, let me take you to the software and show you how to generate this trust. Okay, so here I have the software open in front of me and um, an existing truss model is there. So that's how the interface looks and as I will be modeling the structure from the scratch, I will be explaining you the different options. So to create a new uh, project, we go to File, New Project here and you get a blank screen like this. Uh, you can switch from uh, different views like it, right now it is in the isometric view I uh, can switch to the top view here and look at the uh, the coordinates so X and Y are the horizontal axis of Midas Gen and Z is vertically upwards and everywhere the software uh, follows the right hand rule for the coordinates okay so uh, we start with setting up the type of the analysis so you know, this is a is a two dimensional analysis so the structure type should be a two dimensional structure so we go to model structure type and we specify the the planes in which we will be working so basically the xz plane z being the vertical and x is one of the horizontal uh, axis so click ok and now we are we we can model the structure in the two dimension mode okay so we start by creating a single point or a single node so nodes uh, create nodes and we generate a node at the origin 000 so we have a node here now i'll just change the background of uh, the window so it's more clear so all the display tools are available from this particular um, box or icon you can go to display option and color and just change the background to white okay okay so we have got one node here uh, you can display the node number by clicking on this option so you've got node number one okay now we'll generate an element out of it so model elements and extrude Okay. So our uh, the truss uh, has a diagonal member AB. So we'll start with this particular member first. 
So that's two meters and two meters horizontally. So we'll enter two in the x and two in the z direction and use the selection tool here to just simply highlight the node and click apply and just changing it to the front view okay so that's the diagonal element so let's see so the next one is uh, we have um, 3 meter at 3 meter height and the distance is 4 meters from B to D Three meet, so it's one meter from this particular node. So six and one meter high. Apply and and. and then uh, repeat the same process downwards so this time minus one and again here two and minus two apply yep now we'll draw the uh, horizontal uh, beam so select the node here and as we see in this uh, figure we have uh, three divisions three bays so what we will do is simply uh, mark number of times as three and just enter four comma zero comma zero and I click apply so that creates the beam with three divisions now we just simply need to connect uh, the, the points here to create the internal members. So we go to model elements, create elements and uh, make sure we have truss selected. So truss uh, because we will be using the truss type of element. So truss has been selected and just simply snap on the points here. This. Okay, and we have got the major uh, outline of uh, the center lines of the truss. Okay, now uh, we need to also make sure that uh, everything is uh, actually um, of um, truss type. Otherwise, uh, we will have some moments generated, which we don't want because it's a pin-jointed truss. So, uh, you can check it very easily from the works tree. So on the left side you have a tree menu which describes the uh, model itself. So how many nodes you have, you can you can also always double click to highlight them. What are the truss elements? So truss elements are these uh, beam elements. These are the beam elements. So we can change them into uh, into truss elements. So just when you highlight them by double clicking. You can just simply go to model elements and change element parameters and say element type general beam to truss and apply. So now all are truss elements. So that's how you change the element type or parameter of a given element. Now you need to make sure that when you are applying loads on this structure since every every element is of truss type. So uh, any load that is applied on this structure should not produce any moment on on these truss elements otherwise the analysis might fail so uh, so that's that's the reason why all the loads are applied at the joints only as point loads okay now we need, now we will define some material and section properties for the finite element analysis so we go to model properties material and select add you can select uh, any uh, material we want so if it's steel uh, you can go through the list of codes here so British standard and you can select uh, steel as 355 
You can also define user-defined materials by clicking None, and you can uh, specify the material uh, properties here itself. There are other options like concrete and composite sections, uh, SRC, and also you have user-defined sections. So um, these are similar. Uh, you can select the code and specify the grade of uh, steel or concrete you want to use. Then comes the section property. So you can access it by just clicking on this tab here, or you can just go to Model Properties section, Add. And since this is um, a statically determined structure, so the section shape uh, will not affect the force results. So we can go for any any section shape basically. So we'll go for a simple solid rectangle, and say take it. 0.5 by 0.5 meters. Give it a name. So section one. Okay. If you click on Show Calculation Results, we can look at the uh, different section properties like area and moment of inertia. And just click uh, OK. So once you click OK, you, the section shape will appear on the screen. You can choose to display or undisplay that from this option. Okay, now we define the uh, the boundary conditions. So we'll go to model boundaries and go to supports. So let's go back to the drawing and see what kind of boundary conditions are there. So here we have a roller at point C and at point A we have a pinned support. So let's see how to apply those supports. So I just went to boundaries and supports option here and it asks me to enter the, um, uh, the directions uh, to restrain. So for this particular node, I'll just highlight this first and make sure it's pinned. So for pinned supports, we need to restrain the horizontal X and the vertical Z. Uh, we don't have to worry about Y for this case because it's a two-dimensional structure. So everything is in X, Z plane. So select DX here and DZ here and apply. So that's your pin support. And for this particular node, we just highlight this and just mark DZ vertical. So it can roll horizontally and click apply. So that's how we apply supports on, uh, on a structure. Then uh, we will apply the loads. So that comes under the load option. Let me just uh, quickly save this model. So the software automatically prompts you to save uh, at every uh, two or three minute intervals so you, so you don't lose your data. So you go to loads and static load cases. And here we need to define some names for our loads. Uh, this is important because the software uh, finally gives you the result uh, based on uh, these load case names. So you know, for each load case name, it will give you the um, results in a separate um, dialog box. So we, uh, we write, write in the name. So let's say this is uh, so just name it force here, and just make it a user-defined load. Add. Close this, and now since we have entered the name, we can assign values to these loads. So I'll just go back and I'll check the values that we want to enter. So 21 kilonewton at uh, at point C here and uh, 6 kilonewton horizontally at the point F. So uh, go to loads and since these are point loads and uh, points can also be are, are also referred to as nodes. So basically they are, these are nodal loads. So we type in uh, we select the load case name force and enter in the FZ category minus 21 and select uh, this particular node here. Minus because it's in the vertically downward direction. So that's why minus 21. And we click apply. Similarly, we select this particular node and we change FZ to zero. Apply FX six kilonewton positive because it's from left to right and apply. So you can see the arrows represent the, the, the two different loads applied on the joints.
And now we have uh, applied the loads, we can just uh, click on the analysis button to perform the analysis. So you can just click on this button or you can go to analysis and say uh, perform analysis. Okay. So the analysis is performed. You will see diff uh, a series of messages being uh, displayed in the message window here. So if there are any warnings or errors in the modeling, they will appear up here and the analysis can uh, will stop in between. Okay, so now uh, we'll look at the results. So we'll just uh, hide, I'll hide this uh, section shape. Okay. You can look at the element numbers as well. If I display the element numbers, uh, this is the option used for element number display. So these are your element numbers. It's good to uh, ref uh, sometimes refer the element based on its number. So we go to results and we look at the, uh, the actual forces. So our aim is to find out which member of the truss is in compression and or, or in tension. So we go to truss forces, select the load case name. So as I was saying, we need the names to be uh, uh, specified for the load case because results are displayed based on the load case names. And uh, uh, we can choose to see the deformed shape of this uh, truss and compare it with the undeformed or original shape and look at the values. So just turn on the values here and uh, let's see maximum apply. Just hide the element numbers. So these are the force values, the actual force values on each um, element. Uh, minus indicates the compression and po positive uh, forces indicate the, uh, the tension. Okay, so if I say compression, so it will just show me the compress compressive forces only. So you know these uh, elements are in compression then, and this is, these are the elements which are in tension. And in the background, the gray line indicates the undeformed shape, the original shape. And the one which you see here is the final deformed condition. Now you can choose to animate this, uh, um, this, this uh, structure uh, and see how the deformation is actually occurring. So you can just uh, press on animate, apply and record. You can save this as a, as a AVI file we can, and we can, it's good for presentation purposes as well. Okay. Then uh, the other thing which we are interested here also is the, is the reactions. So you can go to results, uh, reactions, reaction forces and look at the reactions uh, Fx, Fy and Fz. Uh, which are reactions horizontally and vertically. So these are your reactions. We had pin support and roller here, so we get horizontal reaction at uh, the pin support, which is equal to the force applied at this particular joint. And then we have vertical reactions as well. Uh, to see any result in a table format, uh, we have the results, result tables option. So we can quickly go to any uh, particular result type, say reactions for instance, just go to select uh, select the force type or the load case type, click OK and it will show you the reactions in a table format. Again this particular uh, table is Excel compatible so you can just right click and say export to Excel or just simple copy uh, control plus C and paste in Excel. Okay so that's uh, how we do a simple truss analysis in the software. Now we look at some other examples. If you have any questions, please type in the questions window and I'll be able to answer you. Okay, so next example is the statically indeterminate frame analysis. So uh, the last example was a determinate structure. So it was easy to do, uh, to do the calculations even by hand for such structures. Uh, but now we go towards the statically indeterminate frame uh, which has varying uh, material and section properties and um, also uh, um, three, three, three supports, pin supports on the, on the columns here and some different types of loads being applied like settlement, uh, the support settle and then you have a uniformly distributed load applied laterally. Uh, you can say it's uh, like wind load. 
Okay, and the purpose of this particular exercise is to calculate the uh, final reactions, uh, calculate the bending moment diagram, and look at the deformed shape the, because of the settlement. Okay, so uh, just to mention here, the if you want to do it manually, then we have a uh, we have different types of uh, methods which involve uh, strain energy methods and uh, moment distribution methods, uh, moment area methods, which can be used to calculate uh, the forces, uh, force diagrams for indeterminate structures. But it's much uh, quicker to do it using the finite element uh, software. So we'll see how we can um, look into this problem. Okay, so again I'll just open up a new project. So just file new project and just quickly create. Uh, now here since uh, this is a rigid frame, so we'll use the beam elements which allow for uh, rotation um, and translation. So basically moments, actual forces, shear forces, all kinds of uh, forces uh, we will be interested in. Okay, so just I'll keep a note of the uh, dimensions that we need for this example. So we have a beam uh, which is divided at 2 meters uh, intervals and 4 meters and 2 meters here. Okay, so I will start with, uh, we can go for, uh, we can start creating the model from create nodes and then uh, creating lines out of those nodes or we can use the structure wizard which is a very quick way of modeling a beam. So I'll just show you. So we go to structure wizard beam. You can simply enter the distances. So our top beam has uh, 2, 2, 4, 2 meters and just click on add. Okay. And it will generate a beam. And you can just specify material and section as one and one by default. We can specify material and sections later on. So I'm just leaving it as a default number and click OK. So that's the uh, the top beam. And now I'll drop the columns from points B and C. So that's 6 meters and this one is 4 meters. So select this particular one first and model elements extrude and say in the Z direction minus 4. Apply and for this particular column minus 6 and apply. So that's the uh, model generated. Now we'll focus on the, uh, the, the material properties. So we see that uh, we have uh, the same materials uh, in sections for beams AB and BD uh, that is EI uh, and uh, BC and C CE have uh, 1.5 times EI. So, our, and our EI is equal to this value as shown on the screen. So, what we will do is we'll assume a value for E and we'll just keep the I or the moment of inertia as, uh, as one or unity. So, we go to model, um, properties, material, add. And just uh, to make sure that uh, we are entering the values in the correct units. So we have in kilonewton per meter square. So to change the units anytime in the modeling process, we have the unit units bar here, force and displacement. And uh, we can go to model uh, properties material add and select user defined say material 1 select 102.5 times 3 or 10 to the power 3 okay and rest everything we can keep as 0 and just apply then uh, the next thing is sections so just go to section add now we want uh, uh, we want to define a user defined section so we will specify the properties manually so instead of defining a shape and asking asking the software to calculate the properties we'll go to value type and say select solid rectangle and doesn't matter we can keep the shape as zero we are only interested in the properties so we'll go for iyy which is the 
uh, the uh, the the moment of inertia about the major axis. So we type in the uh, value here. So that's one unity, and we'll give a large area. So the reason why I'm giving a large area here is that uh, I don't want uh, to consider the actual deformation in the columns. I'm cons I'm more concerned with the deformation in the beam itself rather than the columns. So I'll give a very high stiffness to actual stiffness to the columns so that I, it, it gives you the deformation in the beams prominently. So give the section a name. So that's uh, section 1 or let's say EI and apply and the second one has 1.5 times EI so I'll just change this to 1.5 and just name this as 1.5 times EI okay. Okay. and close this okay so now how to uh, how to make sure that uh, all these are assigned correctly so we can look at the works tree again so you see that in the sections uh, uh, section list, if you double click on the first section, everything is highlighted. That means EI has been assigned to all the sections, all the elements, which we don't want. We want to assign 1.5 times EI to the right half of the structure. So what we do is um, use the selection tool and simply create a window from right to left just intersecting these two uh, components the column and the beam and then drag and drop uh, the 1.5 times EI uh, section property and now if you double click you can see uh, them quite uh, easily which section is assigned or which property is assigned to which part of the structure okay so uh, um, just I'll pause here. I'll try to answer one of the questions being raised by uh, John. Uh, he has asked that uh, can we ask the software to give optimum sections to be used? Um, so that is basically the design um, uh, that comes under the design part. So yes, uh, we can, and uh, I will show you a simple example of uh, that uh, particular um, optimization. Uh, and uh, the, we can, you can you, you can see that how the software will automatically tell you which is the uh, economical section for um, your structure. So right now I'm just focusing on the analysis. So just after I finish this, I'll take you through an example quickly to show you that. Okay, so uh, now we go towards the boundary conditions. Now uh, again, uh, this is a 2D example, two-dimensional example. So make sure that it is uh, XZ plane and depending on this XZ plane will define the boundary conditions so we'll select this node this one here and this one here and DX and DZ uh, which means pin supports and apply okay now we can start defining the loads so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm, I'll name the different load types with uh, different uh, with different names uh, so that I can separate out which one is settlement and which one is uh, horizontal load, which one is vertical load. So just go to load static load cases and start with vertical. Say user defined add. Actually, let me take a case of uh, the dead load. Modify because I'll also show you how to how the software generates combinations as per the design standards as per British standard or euro codes and then um, say wind load for example so we select wind load and then we have settlement and Okay, uh, which I'll take as um, say say live group for instance. Add. Okay, now we'll assign values. So uh, 16 kilonewton and 20 kilonewton applied at these nodes uh, vertically. 
so go to loads nodal loads and we'll select this node here vertical load case minus 16 apply and minus 20 on this one apply we can look at the load values by simply displaying from the tree menu here display so that's the load value 16 and 20 kilonewton then uh, we will apply the horizontally um, di uniformly distributed load on this particular column which we will name as uh, wind load so we'll select element beam loads for this case element beam loads select uh, just save this model wind load uh, uniform loads and the direction is uh, in the X direction so we'll change it to global X and uh, make sure we enter the values uh, correctly so that's uh, 6 kilonewton per meter so we enter minus 6 because it is applied from right to left in the negative X direction select the column and click apply so that's the uniformly distributed load. Next thing is the settlement at the two columns. So we are experiencing uh, in this structure um, a differential settlement. The column BD settles by 3 millimeters and the column CE settles by 2 millimeters. So we'll go to loads, specify displacement of supports and we want it to settle or the displays vertically so DZ make sure the name is settlement and uh, enter so since it's millimeters I'll enter minus 0 0.003 so 3, 3 millimeters apply and then for this particular uh, node minus 0 0.002 and apply we can check the values on the symbols for the dis uh, settlement and we can also look at the values from the tables so all the input also can be checked by table format you can look at uh, the values if I change it to millimeters so that's three millimeters and two millimeters at node number six and seven uh, similarly you can look at the nodes information the coordinates of different nodes so if I right click on nodes go to tables will show me the coordinates again these uh, tables are all Excel compatible so you can paste uh, the data from Microsoft Excel into the tables here and generate the model data okay so uh, the model has uh, been generated and we can just uh, run the analysis so analysis is done and we go to results we can combine these uh, three load cases so that we can check the result for all of them simultaneously so we go to load combinations and enter a name say combination and type is add vertical load we can give some factors um, say 1.2 for example and wind load 1.4 and settlement say 1.3 or we can ask the software to generate uh, the the um, the load combinations automatically so auto generate and you can select euro code or British standard and based on the type of uh, the design steel or concrete just click OK and you get all the different load cases or combinations okay okay so our objective is to check for combination one so let's go to results first and see the reactions so start with reaction forces and maybe move on to combination check on values and apply so if you see these are the re reactions what I'll do is change the just the color of the uh, output change to black and maybe increase the font right, so it's more clear and similarly element output just change it to okay. 
Okay, so that's the reaction. Again, you can view it in the tables. Then uh, we can look at deformations. So results, deformations, and displacement contour. And here we can uh, switch on legend, uh, deform, and see, compare it with the undeformed shape, apply. So that's the deformation that you're getting. Now this is the nodal deformation, that is deformation at the nodes. If you want to look at the real deformation, that is, uh, you may have some curvilinear type of uh, profile here. You can click OK by selecting real deformation. Maybe scale it a bit, so it will be, say, say four times, for example. Okay. So you see that uh, this particular uh, node has undergone from the three, uh, slightly more than three mi uh, millimeter uh, settlement. The units are in millimeters. Okay, that's because the column has some finite uh, stiffness, and because the vertical loads are applied on the beams, so it takes into account the displacement of those vertical loads as well as the displacement settlement of the uh, of the column itself. Okay, so that's the displacement uh, that you're observing, and the next thing is forces. Now, for forces, uh, the, for, uh, the spinal element software generate the forces about the local axis or the neutral axis of the beam. So, that means we need to check which is the uh, local axis of a particular beam. So, when I go to forces beam diagrams, I have got several options which says fx, fy, my, fz, mz. What do they exactly mean? So, for this, we need to look at the uh, the local axis, and I will just delete this diagram from view so click on this button here so initial view and let's look at the local axis now so click on this display option element local axis click OK and these are the local axis so when I'm looking for actual force in these beams I will be concerned with FX as you can see the red lines these are the local axis X and they are in the actual direction for the beam if I'm looking at bending moment I'll be looking at MY, which is the local axis, uh, which um, bending about the local Y axis. So keeping this in mind, uh, let's look at the forces, uh, force diagrams. So beam diagrams and maybe say combination, um, solid fill, exact, okay. and uh, maybe first of all actual force, legend, and just I'll change this to kilonewton meters and apply. So you see the values in the legend, the colors indicate different values. I'll just uh, make sure the legend is in a fixed format so it's easily interpretable now. You can also plot the values or display the values on the screen. So you see positive, which uh, sorry, negative, which means compression. Okay, so you have compressive force, actual force. Then, uh, if I look at the shear force diagram, FZ, so that's the shear force. So you have a linear variation here on this column because of the uniformly distributed load applied. And here you have constant shear force because of the point load applied. Then MY, which is the bending moment. Let's see how the bending moment looks. So that's the bending moment shape, bending moment diagram. And the different colors indicate the different values. Uh, we can look at all the results instead of the absolute maximum at a particular element. So this is results at each and every point. And you see there's a parabolic shape here because of the uniformly distributed load. So that's how we can quickly see the results of a statically indeterminate structure. Uh, of course, this is in two dimension. As we increase the number of dimensions, uh, we go through to three dimensions. Uh, the complexity increases and manual calculations no longer uh, remain handy. So, uh, so that's where the software really uh, comes into picture. Uh, so I'll just quickly show you uh, an example of the statically uh, indeterminate 3D structure. And in that particular structure, I'll take up the question of the optimization of the steel sections. So let me just uh, open up the presentation again. That's a three-dimensional two-bay frame analysis. 
So uh, I won't be modeling the exactly the same structure, but what I will do is uh, model a similar structure just, just to save time, just to give you the gist of how to model this kind of a, uh, a structure. So um, the element types that we are going to use are beams and truss elements, beams for the columns and the beams, and truss element for the bracings. The structure system has a moment uh, resisting frame and uh, we have a lateral resisting load resisting system in the form of bracings. Uh, bracings are provided in both along the X direction and the Y direction because we want to resist the wind loads in both the directions. Then uh, loads that are applied, we will look at how to apply floor loads. Uh, we know that uh, normally for moment resisting frames we don't model the slabs. So we model the slabs basically as, we assume the slabs as loads acting on the beams. So the loads are either distributed in a two-way or in a one-way fashion. And we'll look at how to deal with such kind of roof loads or slab loads without actually modeling the slab. And, th and this is a 3D structure, so, uh, so fairly complex when it comes to manual calculations. So let's see how uh, the software does it. So I'll again open up a new project. Okay, and what I'll do is uh, this time model a column quickly. So structure wizard um, column, say the column is three meters high. No, say more than that. Say four meters. One times add uh, base is fixed. Let's say material one and one. Click OK. That's the column. Now I'll copy this column further uh, in the X direction and also in the Y direction. So just select all. This is used to select all, all the elements in the view. Go to Model, uh, Elements, Translate. You can also ac access all these features by simply right-clicking Elements and Translate. Okay. Now we want to copy in the X direction. So uh, type in, X, in the X direction, say, uh, 4 meters and say two times intersect node element and apply let's ch change to the isometric view so we have uh, three columns now now we'll again select all these columns so select all and this time we'll copy in the y direction so what we will do is uh, instead of uh, equal distance let's use the unequal distance option and see what it does so um, um, just selecting y here and in the unequal distance, I can actually type in uh, different distances. So basically, if I want columns at uh, 3 meters and then I want another set of columns at 4 meter intervals, I can type in like this, 3, 4, and click Apply. So you can look at the view now. Now you have got columns 3 meters apart and 4 meters apart. How do I know if the distances are correct? Uh, well, you can measure the distances from uh, Query, Nodes, or press simply press F4. So if I say query nodes and just click or snap on two points, say this point and this point, the distance will appear up on the message window. So that's one of the ways you check the distances and make sure your model is correct. Now I'll just uh, simply model the beams. So right click elements, create elements, and make sure I've selected uh, general beam and simply snap on the nodes and start in end nodes. Now you will uh, be asking the question that um, what about the node here? Does the beam consider this node? Well, it does because we selected uh, the intersect node element option here. So when we uh, select the start and end points, it automatically intersects the beam in two parts. We can confirm this by looking at the element number. You see it has got two element numbers, so it's basically divided into two parts. So whenever you have an option which says intersect node element, in the finite element software, you can simply uh, start click on the start and end points and uh, it will automatically divide it at the intersecting node. Okay, we do the same thing for the remaining beams here. Okay, and just here, so just repeating it, these locations. So slightly different from the figure which I showed, but uh, it serves the same purpose. We can look at the forces for this structure as well. Now, uh, the next thing is uh, uh, we want, uh, for most of the uh, 
lateral load resisting systems, uh, we model the uh, bracings, assuming the bracings to be uh, completely the, uh, taking all the lateral loads so that the columns and uh, the columns don't have excessive shear forces. So uh, we model the bracings and we also assume that the beam column connections are pinned. So uh, there is only the vertical load effect on the beams and uh, the columns, uh, we don't, in the columns we don't have any excessive moments coming from the, uh, the beam column connections. So that's one advantage of a pinned a type of a beam column connection. So we will be modeling a pin type of a beam column connections here and we'll make sure that uh, it, it works uh, as we want it to work. So uh, just to display, undisplay the element numbers, I will first of all start with modeling the, uh, the bracings. So elements, uh, create elements and for the bracings as I mentioned I'll use a truss element because I don't want uh, bracings to take any moments only the base placing should always be only in compression or in tension. Now when I'm modeling the bracings I need to check off this option because I don't want the bracings to intersect because bracings normally if I have a X type bracings here they always uh, they normally overlap each other instead of in intersecting. So um, just click uh, and I'll give one bracing here and maybe another one here for the X direction okay and you see there is no intersecting node so that means that these are all one member okay you can give some some more here for example okay I won't be giving maybe another one here but yeah let's not cover the entire thing otherwise uh, there will be no space to enter this uh, structure itself Okay, so uh, now we will uh, make sure the beam column connections are pinned. So we go to model, boundaries, and we go to beam and release. Okay, so the way it works is uh, you just specify which end of the beam you want to release. So whether it is a pinned pinned, that is both ends, pinned fixed, that is the start end, only pinned, fixed pinned, the end, end of the beam pinned or fixed fix which is actually no pin connection it's a rigid connection so uh, I'll just explain to you how to decide which uh, uh, which is pin fix which is the start and which is the end uh, basically so again we'll go back to the local axis system element local axis and we'll look at look at only the x axis x local axis okay and we see that the x local axis goes uh, it points towards that direction in the positive x direction in this case so uh, that means the start of the beam is this particular node I'll just display the node numbers so node number 14 and node number 16 is the end node we also call the start and end as i and j as shown in this uh, dialog box here so if I say pin fixed that means this end is pin this is fixed if I say fixed pin then the latter is uh, this end is uh, pinned and this end is fixed but here we want uh, all beam and column connections to be uh, to be pinned. So what I will do is make sure it's, everything is pin pin. Wherever because all the ends of the beams basically intersect the columns. So just unselect all and we'll try to reselect everything. Right. So to quickly select all the beams here, what I'll do is use this option: select plane, X Y plane, and just click on any point on this plane to very quickly uh, highlight all the beams and just click apply. So now you have got these uh, dots here which represent the pinned connections. So these uh, members are now pinned. The next uh, problem is the supports. So we want fixed supports and uh, uh, we have fixed support over here in the first column. So what I'll do is uh, make sure every uh, sub column has got fixed supports so mod boundaries again supports and make sure D all and R all which is basically restraining every single displacement and rotational degrees of freedom so the structure is not allowed to uh, rotate uh, at this at these nodes not allowed to de deviate or displace so just restricting everything and click apply so it's a perfectly fixed support 
Now sometimes what we also do for, uh, sometimes you may uh, uh, want to input the actual soil parameters for uh, the supports, and that is the uh, stiffness of the soil. So ideally speaking, we, I, we analyze with a fixed or pinned or roller supports, but no such support exists. Every support has, uh, every support in nature has got some finite stiffness to it. So to deal with such kind of stiffnesses, which we normally come across in case of soil, um, we go for boundaries point springs. And what we do is, uh, is the procedure is exactly same as normal uh, kind of supports. Uh, we just select or highlight a particular node and make sure we enter the stiffnesses in the x and y direction and the z direction. So say if the soil has got 10,000 kilonewton per meter of stiffness in the vertical direction, we just enter the value here and uh, we enter corresponding other, other uh, directional stiffnesses here and then uh, the result is that we, allow, we are allowing the column to deform slightly, uh, that is settle slightly and at the same time we are also giving it a restraint. So uh, it is uh, not a perfectly rigid support but uh, you, tend, you tend to simulate the, uh, the, the accurate uh, situation which happens on site using the stiff, uh, spring supports. So just save this model as 3D structure. Okay, now this is a highly uh, indeterminate structure. So uh, materials and sections play a very important role. Yeah, we need to make sure that material sections are properly assigned. Uh, so let's go towards um, model, properties, material, add. So we will be focusing on steel design for this example. So let me just uh, only uh, input the steel properties. So that's steel S355 and click OK. S355 which is the yield strength of steel is 355 megapascal. Then we go to sections. Now we'll define three kinds of sections in this example. Uh, one for the beams, one for the columns, and another one for the bracings. So add, and for the columns we'll go for I section universal columns as per the British standard. Let's say PS493, and scroll down and we have universal beams, universal columns here. So let's say take the heaviest one this one and uh, if you want to edit anything here you go to user tab and edit the values you can look at the calculation results from here so the procedure is fairly same we'll name it as column apply so as you see all everything is assigned with the same section because we didn't assign any material to start with so the default the first section is um, the default section for every element Next thing is the beam, so uh, again I section. Now make sure when you apply a section the dialog box stays open so you can keep on applying adding more sections. So again for the beam let's go for another heavy section, say this particular one and maybe enter the name as beam and click apply. So we have a beam section and then for the bracings we'll go for a pipe section that's the pipe section, name it uh, bracing and in the British standard we call it the circular hollow section so let me select one of them, say this one for example and click OK and I'll close this box okay now make sure that all the sections are correct so like I said in the previous example we can simply select a particular uh, set of elements so I'll select the beams at this level, right, and um, just drag and drop the beam section. So that is the beam section. I'll quickly undisplay all the element local axis so it's clear, okay. And the bracings, uh, so what I'll do is uh, make sure I select all the truss elements. So double click on truss, so all the truss elements are highlighted, and drag and drop bracings. So these are my bracings now, uh, have been assigned correctly. Now the next question that appears uh, is uh, uh, from the from the display is that why are these uh, beams and columns um, connected center to center? What if uh, because in reality the top of the beam should be uh, exactly uh, matching with the co column center? So why is the beam um, offset like this? 
and that's because uh, for every section in the reference line the reference line always represents the centroid of the section so in order to make in order to offset the section slightly we need to manually enforce uh, force the section to shift it to, um, by some amount top or in the bottom direction so for this beams particularly we'll just right click on beams go to properties as you can see the centroid is the default uh, uh, section uh, reference line we go to change offset and just enter center top here um, make sure it's extreme fiber so you can enter the distance as well manually uh, extreme fiber will be automatically shifted to the top and now you see a red dot here which represents the uh, new reference line click OK and you will see the beam shifts automatically so that's how you create the offsets uh, for um, this type of uh, structures so now we've got the main model generated let's now focus on the loads so I'll begin with load uh, static loads say dead load uh, dead load add then live load live load add then wind in the x direction wind load on structure and wind in the y direction add so close this dialog box and start quickly defining the loads so we'll start with self weight first self weight it's a kind of a dead load so uh, we'll select dead load here and make sure z minus one minus one in the z because self weight acts in the gravity direction which is the negative z direction add and close this dialog box then uh, we go for um, the the wind loads so wind loads will act on the on this on the column um, top and bottom uh, uh, nodes uh, basically let's apply the wind loads as the uniformly distributed load on the columns so what I'll do is select uh, all the columns here and go to loads element beam loads um, say wind load in the x direction this is the front view so x direction global x and the value is 10 kN per meter for example and apply so that's the wind load applied next thing we'll do the same thing for the y direction so just select all the sorry all the column the members here global y and wy and say uh, minus 10 apply okay okay so we have defined the um, wind loads now let's define the floor load on the top which i was mentioning earlier so for the floor load uh, we'll define the load coming from the slab uh, in the form of dead loads and also live loads so we select uh, define flow load type and say give it a name roof dead load enter the values say um, minus four for example um, live load say minus uh, three kilonewton per meter square and add then close this and go to loads assign floor loads make sure you have selected roof uh, which which we defined just now distribution type two way or one way distribution let's go for two way direction is global z and just we need to connect the nodes like this and you see the loads are automatically applied distributed in a two way fashion okay since this is a square type of a plan uh, you can see here you have uh, arrangement like this and here you have rectangular type of distribution okay so that's how we apply the flow loads and once we have done this we can simply click on perform analysis as analysis performed and we go to results combinations we want to do the steel design so we'll go to steel design tab and go to auto generate say um, um, B British Standard for instance BS5950 and click OK and we've got all the British Standard um, ultimate limit state combinations here. 
Okay, so I'll close this dialog box and we'll look at the results now. So starting with reactions. Let's see for one of the combinations. These are the different reactions or the supports. You can look at the moment reactions as well. These are the moments that you're getting at the reaction at the supports. Uh, deformations, let's look at the deformed shape, uh, maybe displacement contour, deform, legend, apply. So that's how it is deforming. We can look at the it, it in a more realistic manner. So that's the how it deforms, each beam deforms. Let's look at the bending moment diagram now. So that comes under forces, beam diagrams, uh, MY. Uh, we can, you know, we discussed that how to decide uh, Y, X, and Z. Apply. Uh, just make sure solid fill is checked. So that's the bending moment diagram. Exact will give you a more parabolic shape. Now since the connections were all pinned, so you will see that there is no moment in the column. All the moments are only restricted in the beams. So that means our analysis is correct. Our assumptions are correct here. Now what if you were interested in looking at the uh, at one of the uh, frames at a time? Because we don't normally, we, for report, report purposes, we won't be looking at all the uh, elements at the same time. We look at the one, one of the frames at a time. So what we will do is uh, select a particular plane. Um, let's say it's using three points. So select the central one like this. Just a minute. Yep. Let's we can let me just select it. Just change it to the initial view. Yeah. Okay, and just change this uh, to the line view and say side view and just select the elements here and click on this option which says activate so this will only display this particular frame and now I can look at the results for only this frame so go to beam diagrams say actual force in the columns values legend apply that's the actual force shear force apply so that's the shear force okay then moments uh, moments in the minor axis that's a little bit more moment in the minor axis. Okay, and I'll now activate the entire structure by clicking on this, activate all. That's the entire structure in view. Now, what if you were to look at the results within a beam, how the stresses change or how uh, your, the different uh, displacements change within a, within a beam element? Uh, because you don't have nodes here, so normally finite element results always are displayed on the nodes. So for to see these kind of situations, uh, we can look at beam detail analysis. So what we do is uh, click on this option and click on this box here and just simply select one of the beams uh, which we are interested in. So say just click on this beam. Okay, so the diagrams will appear. So this is the displacement in the Z direction, vertical displacement. You have a slider here. If you move it, you would be seeing the values changing here. Okay, so that's the value of the user value. You can also look at sectional stresses. So if I change to section, you can look at the cross-sectional uh, stresses by changing, uh, this is just locating the points. That's the neutral axis. Look at, you can also look at the, uh, that's the von Mises. You can look at the normal stresses. So that's the normal stress, axial plus bending. You can also look at the shear forces, tau xy, which is the shear force uh, in the longitudinal direction. Tau xz is the shear stress in the vert vertical direction. So that's the shear distribution. As we know that most of the shear, if you see, uh, the, the shear distribution is taken up like this. Okay. So more flow in the in the web. Okay, now we've seen the results. Now we can just quickly design the uh, elements. So for designing the elements, we go to design. 
um, set up the uh, design parameters, steel design parameters, go to design code, uh, let's design it as per British standard. Okay, we can select if we want to do the lateral torsion buckling check or not. So I'll just keep all beams and girders are laterally braced. braced. So I'm not considering any lateral buckling. And go to design and just simply click on steel code check. And it comes up with a table. Uh, blue means the steel sections are passing the check. And these values 0 0.03, 0 0.151, 0 0.075, these are the utilization ratios. So combined ratios as per the actual and bending resistance. So if I just select one of them and go to graphic, it will give me a list of uh, the checks it has performed. So you see this is the design information, the section taken, and these are the checking results, slenderness check, actual resistance, bending resistance, and so on. You can also go through a full a step-by-step -step check by clicking on member and maybe say just click on connect model view and just select one of the members by clicking on it and go to detail sorry just uh, make sure you select select one of these columns and go to detail so the detail result will actually show you the full step-by-step calculation which looks like this so it shows the full step-by-step -step code based calculation which is good for you to manually verify the code checks okay so what equations have been used um, and we also have a, a design uh, tutorial uh, which shows you which equation has been taken from which clause of the code so it's easier for you to reference now say if uh, this is the code check that's fine and uh, the major challenge for the engineer is to optimize a section to say that uh, say for example this column section is uh, very clearly we can see only three percent uh, is being utilized so we should uh, this is highly uneconomical so we would like to optimize this this particular section so we can simply go to just click on this particular column section go to change select some other section say from British standard some other I section you can enter the utilization that you want say between 80 percent to 100 percent and search satisfy section now the software comes up with a list of sections that you can select from so it comes up with uh, say these these many sections select one of them but mind you this is the uh, uh, this is the only the ULS check so this this optimization does not involve the SLS check okay so now you see after the correction in the new uh, combined ratio is 85 percent which is good now you can update it so right now the analysis results are same you can update it and analysis results will be deleted perform a reanalysis and perform a recheck so forces will be again redistributed and your section is changed in the main, main model itself and if you check on graphic you have some other section in the view here so that's how you optimize a section there is also a provision for optimizing the entire model at a time that comes under the steel optimal design so here you can simply uh, select which sections you want to optimize what kind of plate thicknesses you want for the top flange bottom flange web and just uh, run the design and analysis it will run some iterations and come up with the most optimized section okay and text report uh, save okay so that's what it comes up with you see the original section was this one and after optimization this is the section and you've got a massive uh, you've got a reduction in weight of the beam and the bracings basically so you can look at graphically as well um, how uh, the weight varies so uh, that's the uh, this, yeah that's the the red line is the original summation weight summation and the line below is the new uh, weight of the of the structure after optimization so that's how you optimize a particular section i hope that answers your query, your query john and if you have any uh, query then please uh, let me know 
Okay, so the next, uh, just quickly to sum up uh, the presentation, I'll just go through some simple examples of buckling. Because this is another aspect, the stability check. We have looked at, we have looked at the uh, strength check. We have looked at the stiffness checks. Uh, now we are looking at, looking at the buckling or stability checks, which is the third most important parameter for the design. So for the buckling checks, we basically have two types of buckling. One is the actual buckling, which is uh, also defined in the textbooks um, as the Euler buckling. Uh, and the other is the lateral torsion buckling. Uh, so we'll go through both these checks. And both of these are very important for steel sections, especially in the UK, in the building industry, and in the bridge industry. Uh, both these uh, section types are, both these uh, buckling types are very critical in uh, in the structures as most of the structures are, are made of steel. Okay, so starting with the actual buckling, um, I'll just uh, look at, we'll just look at a simple column and uh, how it buckles and uh, the support conditions are pinned and uh, uh, pinned at the base and r roller at the top. So we'll go to my desk chain again, go to new project. So you can click here also to start a new project. And I'll go to model, structure wizard, column, to generate a column. So, um, so the important thing in the buckling analysis is that the more number of uh, elements you have, the more accurate the analysis uh, becomes. Because the buckling analysis uh, works on the concept of generating the, uh, these, the works on the eigenvalue analysis, basically. So you, you, have, uh, you have to have, um, a certain number of uh, elements and nodes uh, to get the maximum response out of all the uh, column or uh, beam elements. So the more number of divisions you have, the better it is. But again, uh, the more divisions also lead to um, slow down of the analysis process. So you have to judge by taking several uh, such cases and see when you reach the optimum level. So for this case, I will take a 10 meter high um, tall column and uh, divide it into 10 sections. So I take um, 1 meter as a distance interval and repeat it 10 times. Add and pin the base. So make sure it's pinned. Okay, and <clears throat> uh, material type uh, we can select from here. So just quickly go to add. Just select steel 355 section add and maybe just I'll select um, yeah, universal column again. Okay. Uh, material and section types are important because uh, for the actual buckling as per the formula by uh, by Euler, uh, it uh, says that uh, the the fundamental mode of uh, the critical load at which the uh, at which the column or the uh, the element buckles is given by the is dependent on the modulus of elasticity, the moment of inertia, and the overall length of the member. So, uh, keeping these things in mind, we need to enter the materials and section correctly. And click OK. And the other thing is, it also depends on the support conditions. So different support conditions may give you different effective length for the buckling. So we'll we'll see how the 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 buckling uh, the the boundary conditions affect buckling through the finite through this analysis. So the first case that I'm taking is uh, print support at the base, and at the top I'll give a roller support. So um, boundaries supports and maybe only restrain the uh, dx, degrees of freedom, and maybe dy, and apply. Okay, now I'm, I will apply a load at the top, um, an actual load. So loads, just name it, say, p, for instance, user defined, and select the top node here, and nodal loads, uh, FZ because it's in the vertical direction, say minus 1000. Okay. And the software will tell me, so this is an initial load I have applied, and the software will tell me what extra uh, factor should be multiplied with this particular load such that 
the column buckles. Okay, so uh, now we set up the buckling analysis control, analysis, buckling analysis, a number of modes we want. So let's go for 10 modes and add. Okay, now run the analysis and just save it. Oops. Okay, we'll reduce the buckling modes here, maybe five. Okay, make sure that this is uh, boundary conditions are entered correctly. Right, TX. Okay, so yeah, so I, I will choose the boundary conditions here for the 2D, uh, uh, the, for the two dimensions only, just to check the uh, modes in the X and Z. So results and um, we go to buckling mode shapes and select mode 1 and um, check on legend, contours, and maybe undeformed shape and apply. So that's the first mode of buckling and the factor which you see here is 15.93 uh, uh, so approximately 16. So 16 times the original load if you apply then the column will buckle in this fashion. And if we scroll through other buckling modes, say mode number two, that's the uh, the critical load factor increases. Mode number four, so and so on. And the more number of elements you have, it will give you a more accurate result for the buckling load factor. Uh, we can also look at the uh, animation of how it buckles. So just click here. So that's how the column is buckling under the actual load. And if go to multi modes and you can look at the several modes at the same time. So like this. Okay. And you can compare the mode, mode shape uh, factors, critical load factors. All right. Now let's see what difference it makes when we have a fixed support at the base and the top is free. So I'll delete the support at the top. So delete and make sure the base is completely fixed. And apply and run the analysis and see the buckling mode shape. See now the mode shift changes and uh, you have the factor required is uh, very less compared to the previous case so it's four, only if you apply four times the load and the column will buckle in this fashion. Mode number two, then three and four. So boundary conditions, um, material properties, section properties and the overall length of the member, they all affect the uh, how the system buckles and at what load uh, it will be buckling. So that's the um, that's how the actual buckling uh, can be uh, taken care of using the fine element software. And finally, we'll look at we'll look at the lateral torsion buckling. So for lateral torsion buckling, uh, the, to capture the lateral torsion buckling, we need to have a, a shell model uh, and. Uh, because the uh, because we want to see the deflection or the variation of deformation of the top flange uh, relative to the bottom flange or the web, 
So to see all these things, we need to model each and every component as the plate elements. So just to quickly show you how we can do that in the software. I go to File and New Project. And I'll just simply generate um, uh, an I section. And we'll look at, in, uh, look at it uh, uh, in terms of the lateral torsion buckling. Okay, so I'll go to Nodes, create a node, apply, okay, and select the node, uh, create a line. Okay, um, in the Y direction, apply, okay, and select the previously selected node by using this option and create another line. So I'm, this is the top flange and now using this node I'll drop um, another node in the vertical direction, another uh, element in the vertical direction, one meter web, sorry it should be the other way around, so minus one. Okay. And now we'll copy the same uh, top and top flange uh, downwards. So just select, right click, elements and translate. And we can measure the distance directly by clicking on the top and the bottom point here. And intersect and node an element and apply. So that's the shape of the, uh, the I section. Now we will divide it, divide these lines further. So change it to the side view. So divide these elements, right click, elements, divide. So divide in two parts. Divide this one in say eight parts for example. Apply. Okay. Now using these lines I'll create plate elements in the X direction. So select all, right click elements, extrude. And make sure this is line to planar. So we're creating planar elements from line elements. Okay, and um, um, we'll copy it, say, in the X direction, 0.1 meters, and say, um, 20 times, right? So we have got um, beam, a uh, uh, 2 meter uh, beam. Uh, which is uh, completely gen uh, made of uh, plate elements. Okay, now we will apply the loads uh, on the supports. So just changing it to front view, selecting the bottom flange here. Go to model, boundaries, let's assume a simply supported case. So paint at this location and roller at, in this location. And the top will be loaded with uh, a, a uniformly distrib I mean, a uniform pressure load. So basically, the what we want to achieve is compression at the top and tension at the bottom. So since the top is in compression, uh, so the top flange uh, or and some part of the web will buckle, and we want to see that effect. So loads uh, create a load case a pressure. And let's select the top flange, loads, and apply pressure loads. And this is in Z direction, say minus 100, apply, okay. And the same way uh, we define materials here, so say steel, as 355 and since these are plate elements we have to define thicknesses so we go to properties thickness we define two types of thickness one for the flange so that is 0 0.05 or 50 millimeters and the other for the web which is 20 millimeters or 0 0.02 and uh, make sure the web and the flange thicknesses are correct so I'll select the top flange and the bottom flange and drag and drop 
0 0.05 and select the remaining like this drag and drop 0 0.02 and to see if the shape is or the thicknesses are correct I can display the thicknesses from display option plane thickness click OK and OK so you can see the thicknesses like this so now we can uh, run the buckling analysis so buckling analysis control defines say, five modes for instance pressure load add and click OK and the analysis okay so the analysis is complete let's look at the by buckling mode shape so results mode shape mode 1 say undeformed and apply so you see cle clearly you can see that uh, because of that vertical load the beam has um, uh, uh, has buckled laterally the top flange the bottom flange being in tension is uh, does not buckle and the top flange and some part of the web has moved laterally because of the compression and the force required for generating uh, this kind of uh, mode is uh, almost seven times the applied loading which was 100 uh, kilonewton per meter square so that's how we can do the buckling uh, lateral torsion buckling check uh, on any kind of structure so what we need is the uh, or for that matter any kind of local buckling check so if you browse through the several other modes you'll find local uh, local buckling as well in some of the modes so you see here uh, there is some kind of uh, warping at these locations so if you model the structure as plate elements then you have this advantage of taking in um, the this kind of local buckling effects and looking at them in the finite element analysis okay so uh, that concludes this uh, session today um, if you have any questions, please uh, you can post it on the questions window. So that's just one of the videos for the lateral torsion buckling. Uh, for the uh, for the FRP beam, um, we generally um, yeah actually the uh, the FRP beam we are treated as uh, uh, as uh, as the orthotropic with orthotropic properties so if you have got the uh, equivalent orthotropic properties for the FRP beams uh, you can uh, consider them in the analysis so say uh, when you define the material itself um, you have user defined you can go for orthotropic define the properties in different directions and uh, we can do the uh, consider those um, properties into account in the analysis uh, there's another question uh, which uh, does the software include nonlinear analysis under uh, seismic effect uh, yes uh, we can uh, do such type of uh, analysis uh, uh, using the um, time there uh, well there are different ways uh, you can either do a pushover analysis which is nonlinear uh, static seismic analysis so we uh, we have an option here um, for the for pushover separately so you can define your hinges in the beams and um, apply the incrementally uh, incremental loads and do the pushover analysis or you can also uh, look at the time history analysis with uh, in with such kind of uh, nonlinear hinges so the the way it works is you have to idealize the structure uh, the the frame uh, you know, as a, as a frame with uh, plastic hinges uh, at different nodes and then apply the time history or uh, the incrementally increasing uh, lateral seismic load and you can look at the uh, status of the hinge how the 
uh, inch goes into uh, uh, elastic to the plastic zone. So I'll just uh, show you what kind of hinges can be defined here. So if you select say Eurocode, you can define this type of Eurocode hinges for different state of the st uh, structure. And the software will tell you at which uh, stage in the stress strain curve the uh, node is in. Um, Jimmy Young has asked, uh, does the software do fatigue analysis? Well, uh, this is uh, the frame analysis software. And for fatigue analysis, uh, we do have a detailed finite element software, which does, uh, which allows you to input the stress cycle and the strain cycle. and gives you the damage life of the structure. So the web purpose of this webinar was uh, basically to look into the basic frame analysis and uh, buckling analysis and design features and how it can be implemented for simple frame structure basically. So uh, fatigue analysis, um, we do have several uh, tutorials on our website. Um, you can uh, mail us to, uh, ma mail us at uk support at mydesuser.com and we can send you the tutorials. Okay. So uh, if there are no other questions, then I would like to end this uh, session. Uh, we'll send you the recording of this session uh, uh, shortly and uh, also the different uh, documents involving hand calculations and correlation of the hand calculations with the software